Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Zion Fairwater. Special hello to uh, those joining us online. We hope that you are able to participate in every way possible via online. Let's get started with an opening hymn. Please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The word is near you. On your if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, faith comes from what is heard. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine, apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. 
We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for some special music that uh, spontaneously is going to come from Lois. Oh, 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 somebody touched me. Oh, 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 somebody touched me. Oh, 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 somebody touched me. And it must have been the hand of the Lord. Holy, 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 somebody touched me. Holy, 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 somebody touched me. Holy, 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 somebody touched me. And it must have been the hand of the Lord. Feel the fire burning, Lord, somebody touch me. Feel the fire burning, Lord, somebody touch me. Feel the fire burning, Lord, somebody touch me. And it must have been the hand of the Lord. Down in my heart, Lord, Somebody touch me down in my heart, Lord. Somebody touch me down in my heart, Lord. Somebody touch me, and it must have been the hand of the Lord. Our first lesson for today is from Acts chapter 8, beginning with the 26th verse. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to, this chari to his chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does this prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down to the water, and Philip baptized him. 
when they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Please join me in reading Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31, responsibly. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they may be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. Our second lesson is from 1 John chapter 4, beginning with the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers and sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Please stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. 
abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them, uh, they are that bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you, much bear, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Do we have any kids that want to come up for a children's sermon? I'm saying I got goodies. All right.
get up and go. If you asked me to quote some of the most common words out of our Bible, these would probably make the list. Some version of arise and go, get up and go, or just go. This word is spoken by God in almost every book of the Bible. Looking at just a few examples, we can see that these words are not always easy words when they're spoken. For instance, Abraham is told to leave his home and go. Go. God doesn't tell him exactly where, but God will let him know when he gets there. Moses is told to go. Go back to Egypt. Confront the Pharaoh. And lead God's people to freedom from slavery. The voice of God comes to Deborah the prophet, and she tells Barak to go and defend God's people even though they're horribly outnumbered. The prophet Samuel is told to go. Go and anoint David as king, even while Saul was still king. So many more instances in the Bible of God directing people to go. In today's reading from Acts, the Spirit told Philip to get up and go. Philip was probably not at all surprised with this. By this time, Philip was very used to the movement in God's community and its people. Get up and go, the Spirit told him, and you will receive further instructions once you get there. All through the book of Acts, people didn't question this get up and go approach, even though there were some really good reasons why not to live like that, but they didn't question it. That was the practice of the church community in Acts and the individuals who were part of it. They followed a get up and go God. So in today's story, Philip was sent to what was a Philistine town. Now let me just refresh your memory who a Philistine was. They were the bad guys, the bullies. They were always attacking and beating up those Israelites. If you remember Goliath, big scary Goliath that David took down with a slingshot was a Philistine. So this is where Philip is sent. And there he encountered a member of the African royal elite. Chances are, Philip had never ever talked with a dark-skinned African eunuch before. This African eunuch was reading out of the prophet Isaiah, and he got confused. So Philip stopped and chatted with him and shared the good news of Jesus Christ. And then the eunuch asked, what prevents me from being baptized? Philip remained silent for a moment because there were any number of answers that came to mind. Uh... What uh, prevents you from being baptized? Uh, To start with, the Bible. Right there in Deuteronomy 23, eunuchs and foreigners were not included as part of the community of God. But Isaiah 56 contradicts Deuteronomy 23. And so there was an ongoing disagreement within the community of faith over who was to be included and who was to be kept out. So 
Some things never change, do they? What prevents you from being baptized? Well, church order. Philip doesn't know the status of this Ethiopian eunuch. Was he a Jew? Was he even a believer? Given his level of biblical knowledge, probably not. All we know is what the scriptures tell us. That the eunuch came to Jerusalem to worship. But maybe he just did that out of curiosity. At this point in the history, the church in Jerusalem had not yet ruled on the status of eunuchs or Ethiopians or non-Jews. What is to prevent you from being baptized? Plenty! But Philip didn't hesitate. As soon as the eunuch sees some water by the side of the road, the one who wants to be included is included. The foreigners are in, the eunuchs are in. Now, sometimes it seems like the get up and go requests of God are a bit jarring to us. They startle us with our tightly held beliefs and boundaries. God desires to shake us up every now and then with the joyful yet frightening movement of the Spirit. The Spirit who's always a couple of steps ahead of us. The church that is faithful does its best to cultivate within itself a life and an ability to respond to the Spirit's disruptive presence by going along with it, by following the Spirit. And that's exactly what Philip did. The Spirit told him to get up and go. And that's what he did. He went to a place that most likely he'd never been to before to meet with a kind of person he probably never talked to before to change his church community in a way that it had never been changed before. Philip trusted the Spirit. Philip didn't even have time to process his recent experience with the eunuch, and the scriptures tell us that the Spirit immediately whisked him away to his next assignment. But I can imagine that Philip must have been awed to become the latest participant in the church's unfolding story, destined to be and delighted to be on the receiving end of some of God's most important words for transforming us as individuals and as a church community. Get up and go. Where might God be calling Zion to get up and go? Where do we need or who do we need to include, to reach out to, and to welcome? Trust the Spirit to answer that for you. Amen.
Please stand as you are able for the response to the word. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. We take a moment to pause for some inner self-reflection of the things we wish to confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Sisters and brothers, rejoice. Mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us turn to one another and share a sign of that peace and love. You may be seated for the announcements. Uh, just a couple here. Um, those doggone scammers have been at it again. I got a couple of text messages yesterday from some of you saying that those scammers are out there. I figure if I just keep announcing this, it will become such a, oh, they're at it again, and you know what to do. Please never send money. I don't know that there's anything we can do if we give the phone number to the police. <clears throat> but as you know, we work here as a church together, so I'm not going to be asking you for money. The council will come to you if they need money, right, Bonnie? Yes, I will. <laughs> um, why don't you say a little something about that? <laughs> I think I will. Uh, you may have noticed that we have equipment in our back parking lot. They have started working on our windows. And I guess I have to admit to being confused at one point because I thought for sure they were taking out our big front window and the other one in the front and taking it back to the studio. 
but they are not. They are doing everything on site. So within the next three weeks, we will be completed. Um, so we need money, guys. We thought we had like a long time to raise all this. So if anybody was planning on doing any donation to the stained glass project, please feel free to put it into the offering plate or send it over to the church any way you want to. Uh, and that would be much appreciated. I have asked our project manager, Jonathan, to join us for lunch on Wednesday, for First Wednesday. So he will probably be here, uh, and you can ask him any questions that you have at that time, too. Does anyone have any questions right now for me? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. And as she mentioned, this Wednesday is First Wednesday. I hope we don't get snowed out again. So um, come join us. And Carol has told me that the same person who was going to be here last month will be here again from the ARDC. Did I get that right, Carol? <laughs> My alphabet soup is all stirred up. OK, so please come join us for First Wednesday. Also, please note in your calendars that we will be honoring our graduates, but actually it's just one, J.C. Digman, on May 19th. Now that is a Pentecost Sunday, so that's a whole reason to celebrate. And then if, if you know of any graduates from other school systems, not just high school, um, please let me know so we can give a salute to all of those graduates. Um, Jen, do you have something you want to share? Thank you. Look at you. Yeah. Strut your stuff, honey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but steady. <clears throat> Good morning. I just want to say thank you, first of all, to everybody who turned out last weekend uh, in support of the Brat Fry, to those who gave money, those who gave um, baked goods, those who stuck around and helped clean and, and cook and serve and all of that and helping guide the mountain of kids that we had in there on Saturday. Thank you all so much for that. Um, the Brad Fry raised over $2,300 profited. Oh so yeah, it was a great showing of support and uh, what we can all do as a team. So thank you very much. And also thank you to those people who have offered up scholarships for the students for camp. Um, that has been a huge relief lifted off of some shoulders of parents. Um, and actually I had a student, well two students who are on the fence because financially they just could not swing that money and now they're going for sure. So that's wonderful. Thank you all so much. You, you don't know what an impact that has made. So I appreciate that. <clears throat> so um, next Sunday uh, we have um, BYG, the beginning youth group, fourth through sixth graders. We're going to do the golfing that we couldn't do last week because my doctor's too stubborn. So we're going to do that. And then um, uh, that evening is also the... Um, New Orleans high school youth group meeting for the kids that are all going to New Orleans, our joint meeting. This time it's in uh, Ripon at Grace Ripon at 6 o'clock. So that's next Sunday night for those kids. And on that same note, May 18th, um, we just found out now that we were able to do another one of the pork chop, uh, you know, in the lion's wagon over there in Rosendale. So we get to do that again on May 18th. And I'm going to take all of the, the chips and soda and everything, water that was all donated for the uh, brat fry, that which did not sell, and use it for the pork chop fundraiser. So we'll have even more profit. Um, there's people over at St. Stephen's that are getting me some Thrivent dollars so and um, to cover the cost of the meat and all that kind of stuff. But what I need you to do is come and eat. Um, and that is a, uh, May 18th. It's Rosendale Rummage Sale Day. So it'll be, uh, it should be a pretty busy, you know, so. <clears throat> it will be still drive-through, but we will also have some tables set up for the people that are walking around rummaging and stuff. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, did I say that? Rummage sale. So, rummage sale, Saturday, May 18th in Rosendale. And then make your way to the corner for lunch. And we'll have pork chops and chicken sandwiches. So, um, yeah, that, again, will go to, to help support the kids that are going down to New Orleans for our national gathering. Um, and then, uh, oh, Vacation Bible School. I forgot to mention this. So it, it seems like a long way away, but Vacation Bible School really is just right around the corner. Um, so I put flyers in the back. 
for information about when it is and it's here and what time it is and all that kind of stuff. Um, so if you have, if you want to be a part of Vacation Bible School or you have any youngsters that would like to be a part of Vacation Bible School, please pick up a flyer. Um, it's got the little registration on the bottom. Also, online registration will open in June. You can just go through the church website and register online. Um, but anybody that's interested in helping out or donating or anything, that all that information's on here. We are having a meeting tomorrow at 4.30, Teresa and I, um, to you know, nail down the P's and Q's of, of Vacation Bible School, the stations, and all that kind of stuff. So if you'd like to be on the planning portion end of that Vacation Bible School, uh, please join us here tomorrow at 4.30. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Before we get into a video that I want to share with you, are there any other announcements to be made today? Okay. Carol, could you play that Lutheran World Relief video? Earthquakes and flooding, conflict and violence, hunger and extreme poverty. Where there is suffering, your love is there. Since 1945, following the Second World War, Lutheran World Relief has worked ceaselessly to end poverty, injustice, and human suffering. We provide aid in emergencies and help families restore their lives. We partner with communities to build and grow rural economies. We break the cycle of poverty so families and communities can thrive. For nearly 80 years, you have responded to God's call to be the body of Christ in the world. Because of you, we reach further, stay longer, and stand faithfully alongside our neighbors in need. Because of you, hundreds of thousands of families have been comforted by LWR quilts and kits. Because of you, the hardest to reach neighbors in Peru are leading their communities out of poverty. Because of you, a mother in Mali is rejoicing that her child has enough food to eat and grow after being at the brink of death. Because of you, a family in Ukraine has access to mobile medical clinics and can get life-saving health care despite living amid ongoing violence. Because of you, hope is being restored. Я вдячна дуже, дуже. У мене немає просто вже. А los pueblos más olvidados han ayudado. Muchas gracias, Anita. Who will your love reach next? Thank you for all of you who have donated to Lutheran World Relief. Now let us present our offerings to God.
Please stand as you are able for the offertory. Let us pray. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, from idleness to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you. And with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the human family, and all the world. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, for the well-being of the earth and for all created things, for rivers, lakes, streams, and creeks, for those who are experiencing disasters in tornadoes and floods, oh God, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness, God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign, God of grace. For those who are in any need, for any who are experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, for those who are ill or sick or suffering, especially those we now name either silently or aloud. God of grace, for Zion Lutheran Fairwater, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes and care facilities, and for all who seek to share your love with the world. God of grace. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us like them to bear much fruit and to continually grow into our discipleship. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us, O God, for the sake of Christ who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the final blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
bless you now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the sending song. Alleluia. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>